Hello, how are you all doing? Thank you very much for stopping by in this Bible study. I've heard about this man who was very sick and he would not be working for a long period of time and he had a big family, so I have to take care of that family. But he was unable to walk. And the people at, at his church, they draw a meeting, they decide they're going to have a meeting and they're going to pray for this man. So they set the time and the time came and they all gathered there except one man. So they were praying for the man to get food, for the man to get money, for the man to get some help because his family, big family is a big family. So the man needed some help, but they were praying. And during that time, there was a knock on the door. There was a young boy when they opened the door, there was a young boy at the door and he says, Daddy sent his apologies. He says he will not be able to make it to this prior meeting, but he sent a wagon full of prior. So when they went out there, there were canned food in the wagon. There were beans, there were potatoes, there were pumpkin, there were squash. There was a lot of, even meat was in the wagon. So the man that was sick, that needed some help, I've got a lot of help now. Sometimes, you know, we pray for others and we know that we can help others. So they draw that meeting to pray for and when there were people there can help. So this even Bible study is going to tell us how to direct to our prayer and it's needed, not for ourselves, but to help others. Please let us bow our heads and invite the Lord's present to be in the midst. Eternal God and most righteous Father, as you are about to do another Bible study, we invite your Holy Spirit to be with us. Please give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Through Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Topic this evening is, friend, lend me three loaves. Part one. And text is taken from King James Version. John 14, verses 23 to 24. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my saying, and the words which he hear is not mine, but the father which sent me. Here we see that Christ was continually receiving words from his father. He lived, he prayed, he thought everything was centered on his father. He and his father was one. Early in the morning, who spent time with God, daily received a baptism of the Holy Spirit, daily. His souls and his lips were filled with grace that you were able to impart to others. Other people who needed help, he was able to give them spiritual strength. Fresh words were continually pouring from his mouth, given to help the weary and the oppressed. Fresh words. Just as all you see, a branch connected to a trunk, that was all Jesus connected to the Father, and that was all we are supposed to be connected to him. That's the connection there. So when he spent this time, whatsoever he drew from his father, it was for us. He gave it to others. And we too have to practice spending time with God that we can draw it out and give to others. When we spend time and get this sap, this energy, this strength from God, the smallest of sin we can overcome and the smallest of temptation we get over it because we have the grace of God within us. And all who experience that grace and that and accept Jesus Christ will become a part of uh, these things will become a part of them. 
and they also become a part of God. It's a connection going on. And when we are connected to Christ, we will have a purified heart, a circumspect life, and a faultless character. You know, are the branch that we have now will bear some nice fruits on it. We'll see love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. All these will be connected. These will be flowing from our lives when we are connected to the Father. So how we need to be connected? We have, if a man love me, will keep his word, keep the Lord's word, have it in our hearts daily, contemplate upon it, let it be a part of us. Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So here again we notice when Christ came to this earth, he came to help us, to minister to us. Not for people to minister to him, but for him to minister to us. His life was a life of continually overflowing with love and tenderness towards mankind and towards us. It was, full with, it was filled with faithfulness, loyalty to God, and loving service, which bind him to the divine approval. Lot of loving service he, he, he had there. We, we now are preparing to be in the companionship of angels, and we should have the same disposition. We should have the same character as he has. In Hebrew 1 and verse 14, it says that we are a ministering spirit is sent to minister unto us. So we'll be a part of it, but we have to be a part of God, part of Jesus Christ. In this blessed uh, companionship, we shall learn what it is, who is our neighbor and who we should minister to. Because when we receive from Christ, Christ is going to speak to us often. Daily is going to speak to us. It's like every move we make is right there. So we are going to know who to minister to and how to minister. We're going to look, look back at uh, the priest in the temple. Let's look at the priest in the temple. The priest in the temple was daily officiating his work. He was doing his ritual. You can call it rituals. Baby came there daily and what he did, he blessed them, right? And he took the, what you call it, the redemption offering. It was like a routine he was going through. He didn't make any, take any special mark of the parents or children. Unless he saw some form of wealth or there were signify some high rank, he may have glanced. But Mary and Joseph, they're from the poorer class. So when they came, they came with the poorer class of offering. So the baby Jesus that he held up in his hand, the baby Jesus, he did not realize who he was really holding up. He held up the baby Jesus to bless him and there. He realized, I'm going to inscribe his name, Jesus, on the roll as the firstborn. He did that. But what he did not know that he was holding up the majesty of heaven. Wrote down the baby name and held up the majesty of heaven. The king of glory. The one in whom Moses had written about. The one in whom Moses says, show me thy glory. And we ask uh, to represent him before the, the Egyptian. Who says that he is the great I am. The priest did not know who he was holding up. One in whom was the foundation of the, who's the Jewish system is centered all around. So it wasn't only an ordinary child in his hand. It was not. The name which sacrifices everything for us. The name that he wrote down, he didn't realize that that name was to abolish this uh, sacrificial system and this offering. It almost reached a point where type had met anti-type and the shadow and substances. He did not, did not know what he was doing. In this child of Bethlehem was veil. He could not see the glory that was before him. He did not see the one who angel adored and who angel bowed down and worshiped. 
If we have a connection to God, we'll know who comes across our pathway. We'll know who to minister to. And, we, and everyone we should minister, friends, everyone we should minister to. The unconscious baby that he, that, was, that he held up in his hand, that little unconscious baby, the little seed whom the first altar was planted at the gate of Eden, pointed people, pointed to point everyone that there will be a redemption before the gate of Eden. He was all in this was Shiloh, the peace giver, the one who declared himself to be the great I am. The priest did not know that. As a high priest, he should have known those things. The one who had guided the Israelite with the pillar of cloud and fire. The one who has been prophesied about that he would be the desire of all nations. And even today, all nations desire that king of kings. He was the hope of humanity. The one who was to pay the ransom of sin for the whole world. The one was the true high priest, the true high priest of God, the head of the unchangeable priesthood, who is there now the intercession of the intercessor at the right hand of the majesty and I. The priest was just doing his duty. It becomes a ritual. Friends, let no part of our lives become a ritual. Let us have a genuine connection, a genuine pulling from the, from the trunk of the tree that we'll be able to give to others. Let it not be a ritual. So Christ came to minister to us, and we did not realize that. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4, and it says, the Lord God had given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He waketh morning by morning, he waketh mine ears to ear as the learned. Here we see again, it was prophesied morning by morning. It was hope morning by morning that the Lord gave him a tongue how to speak. You and I really need the tongue to know when to speak and when not to speak, how to control ourselves. We need that. By con con conversation, the speaking of kind of words will be accomplished. It will, it will do a lot of good, accompanied with good deeds. All these will help to warm others' heart. I will find an entrance into others' heart and win them to Christ. Kindly words and good deeds done for others help to point them to the kingdom of God. God give wisdom to those who seek it. And we should daily, morning by morning, seek for it. Or daily, seek for it. Let every moment be spent seeking for it. Speak to Christ. Just as I'm speaking to you now, speak to Christ the same way. I do that sometimes. You think I'm conversing. I'm speaking to Christ as if he's right there. Speak to him. We must keep our hearts uplifted to God so that when the opportunity presents itself, we will know what the right word to say at the right time to help afflicted souls. And we should also search out who we can help and speak the word of season to them to warm their hearts. We should be channels through whom the Holy Spirit can work to, to do his work. Channels to flow refreshing compassion. That's what we should be, channels of refreshing compassions. There are many who are weakened. They have weakened courage. Their, their confidence is low. Their faith is low. They are fighting life's battle and need to be strengthened and encouraged. And we need to get the refreshing from the Lord that we can help these people, weaken people, People are discouraged and people who need encouragement. If we are pressing closer and closer to the side of Christ, wherein is your, we will learn to carry the message of peace and comfort the sorrowing and disappointed, the sad and the broken heart. Yes, we'll point the discouraged 
to the word of God, to the Lamb of God, and we'll pray for the sick and help wherein he stands. We'll have that living connection with Jesus, just as how Jesus have that living connection with his Father, not for himself, for humanity. He got that connection for humanity. And he got it day by day, morning by morning. Luke 11 and verse 1, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So here Christ was by, by himself. Christ was praying to his father as usual. The disciples were absent. They were not there. But when they returned, they heard him uh, praying, and they were astonished. They were astonished. They were deeply moved at the way God spoke. Jesus spoke to his Father, God. So he asked the Lord, teach us to pray. And we are, that's where the prayer come from, where the Lord teach us, our Father who art in heaven. The Lord taught them how to pray. That's what the Lord did. The Lord taught them the Our Father. If you do not know the Our Father, Comment in the box and let me tell you, give you the Our Father, the prayer that the Lord taught them. Luke 11, verses 5 to 6. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine in his journey is come to me and I have nothing to set before him. So here we see Christ used this illustration to teach them a lesson in this praying. This is a parable with an illustration. In this parable here, the petitioner is asked, was asking not for himself, but to give. I wanted to look at it. The friend came to visit him, or he went to his neighbor, and asked the neighbor to lend him three loaves because a friend came and he wanted to assist the friend to meet this, to supply the necessities of the weary, what you call it, belated wayfarer. Came late at midnight and he was, I needed help. But he did not get that, he did not have anything to supply his friend. So he went to his neighbor. You and I have nothing to supply anyone. But we know the source. We know where the source is. Jesus Christ. We get that through the Holy Spirit. So day by day we ask for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when the baptism, we get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit will show us the work. The Holy Spirit will show us the work that we have to do for the day. Though the neighbor was unwilling because the neighbor turned the man away, you know, he never wanted to give him. He says, my family, if you read it further, we are all sleeping in bed. But this other friend, he wasn't deterred by this turning away. He knew that he must have something to help his visitor. He must have something. He must get something to take to his visitor. Are you and I so persistent that we must get something when we go down on our knees to take to others out there? We should be persistent. Are you and I so persistent? We see a sister or a brother sick that we know that we have to go down on our knees and pray and don't even move until we see a change in this. Are you and I so persistent that we see others in need and we decide I cannot help them, but I'm going to pray and let the Lord show me the way, mark out the way that I can see and know what to do. This probably illustrates persistentness. That was one point the Lord was pointing out. Persistentness, and we need to be persistent in getting things to help not ourselves, but to help others. In like manner, the disciples was to seek that. The disciples, when Jesus was speaking, he was encouraging the disciples to seek that, seek from him. Because what happens sometimes, people will be thrown in their pathway, in a, or they'll be thrown in an unexpected position. Right, where they're gonna realize that their, their efficiency, their, their humanity is not enough. 
So they're going to need more than that. So the people would come to them feeling destitute and helpless. So the Lord was teaching them, be persistent and know where to get your help from, that you can help, spiritual help, to impart to others. And you know one thing, they were not to turn one soul away unfed, but direct them to the source. Get it from the source and direct them to the source. Do not turn anyone away. Don't look at their dress. Don't look at their outward appearance. Because the part that you're supposed to look at, you cannot read it. Even if you see the art, you cannot read it. So don't even look at the outward appearance. Now consider the art. Because you cannot read that. The man who, whose friend came in the wee hour of the night for entertainment at un, unreasonable hours at midnight, he did not turn him away. Some of us would tell him, man, it's late now. Go lay down there and sleep or something. Daybreak, you get something or something. But he did not. He wanted to satisfy his hunger friend in the midst of the night. The man, his friend may not even live to see daylight. So let me give the man something now. How many people come across our path and we never see them again? We never see them again. How many people come across our path and we never say any kind word again and they turn us away? How many people came across our path and refused to walk back that path again because of the experience they have? We have to be very careful. If we do not have it pressed to us and show others where it is, we have to give an account. So this man did not turn his friend away. He, did, he was determined that he was going to help his friend in the midst of the night there to satisfy his friend hunger, to supply the needs. Are you and I supplying any needs and satisfying anyone? The words that we speak, friends, sometimes we may open our mouth and we realize that we speak words that are harsh and we shouldn't be. Go and express yourself. Say sorry. I am sorry for that. That will do a big difference. Brother or sister, I am sorry for coming down so hard on you. Forgive me. You can even tell him your fault. I was experiencing some difficulties and I really needed, uh, I, did, I, I just bent out on you for sorry. That's what we need to do. But do not turn anyone away. Luke 11 and verse 7 to 8. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, Yet, because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. So here we see the man, when he went to his neighbor, the man was telling, my bed, my door is shut. My children are in bed. I cannot rise up and give you. But they were, even though they were in bed, he rise up and he give to his business. He was persistent. You understand me? He was persistent. And the persistent that he was, it, would, it was to the points of, you call it, point of annoyance. That, that all he was, to the point of annoyance. He was persistent. To the point of annoyance. So here we see that he went there and he annoyed the friend until he, he got what he wanted. We should be continually seeking God to get the bread that we can give to others, the bread of life. People came feeling destitute and helpless. People passing our path were destitute, helpless. Words need words of inspiration. We need to give it to them. But remember now that we cannot give it to them until, we cannot give it to them until we ourselves have it. We cannot give what we do not have. However, the selfish neighbor does not represent the character of God. And I want you to understand this. This man is not representing the character of God. This is, it is showing the contrast of mankind 
and God the Father. And the contrast striking difference. It was the difference it was pointing out that this man would not move, but even though he moved because of the annoyance, because of the, what, what we would call in today's language, the continually bothering. That what get him up out of bed. But God says he delight to give. God delight to give. That's why it says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and he shall find. Because everyone that asks yet receive it. Ask. It was not like this man. God said, ask and you're going to get it. Because as long as we go to God and we ask willing and we ask it in faith, he's, he's more than willing to give it to us. He's full of compassion. And he longed for us to request this compassion and to come unto him in faith. He gave us that. Uh, he longed for us to give it, not for us to keep to ourselves, but to minister to others. Just as how oh, this man, he got the bread that he was persistent in getting, he did not keep it to himself, he gave it to others. And that's how oh, you and I should be persistent in getting things to minister to others. Get the Holy Spirit, that's what we need to ask for, and our problem will be solved. Luke 11, 9 to 10. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asks it, receive it. And he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. So this is what God wants us to do, just to come to him and to ask. Ask, and we shall get it. Ask, please, ask. Ask him. You may go down on your knees trembling. Trembling in fear that your prayer will not be answered, but go down on your knees same way. You have faith, go down on your knees. God is going to answer you faithfully same way. You have faith and he's going to answer you. In order to strengthen our confidence, Christ addressed he in the prayer. Christ asks us to address God as Father. Our Father who art in heaven. That word, dear Father, it is a privilege that we don't even realize we get. To call the infinite, the God of the universe, Father, is a privilege. He gave us that privilege. To, and he showed us a sign that our love and trust in God. And it's a pledge to him of his relationship towards us. So don't forget to call him Father, Father. It said, when we said, Father, it is like music in his ears. He need to speak it and we need to say it again and again. Father, Father. It is, it is, it is like a title, but it's more than a title. It's an opportunity to show our closeness, our bond that Jesus gave us to say when we approach the Father. God regarded us as his children, and he redeemed us from this careless world. And he chose for us to be members of his royal family. And that's the reason why he says that we are sons and daughters of the heavenly king. We are sons and daughters. The lesson teaches us the necessity of holding on to our father, persevere to our father. In pressing our request to God, we should all on. And his willingness to hear and to answer. Our prayer should not be selfish, as I said before. Acting for self, self, self. We are to ask that we may able to give. Ask that we may able to give. Sorry. Luke 11 and verse 11 to 13. If a son should ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, 
will he offer him a scorpion? If he then being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? What this is simple saying, it is illustrating the willingness that God wants to bless us. The willingness. He's saying if our earthly fathers can be so kind, anything their children want, they give it to them. What says me? He will give you all, and he, he specifically down here says the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is the one that's going to lead us in our truth. The Holy Spirit is going to open our understanding. The Holy Spirit is going to show us what to do daily. So we should ask for the Holy Spirit. When we have the Holy Spirit, we have everything. The Lord is rich in grace and mighty in power. And he will give to all those that comes to him in faith. He will give. In the same way the disciples prayed on the day of Pentecost, we too should be praying even more now than how they prayed for the Holy Spirit. It is needed no more than before because this world is filled with darkness, just like a funeral, a funeral parlor. There are many false doctrines. There are a lot of heresy, a lot of satanic deceptions, a lot of misleading, misleading people, lead, misleading others down to perdition. And if we do not have the spirit of God, we cannot do simple work. All what we present to people will be in vain. So when we pray, we must pray for the Spirit. Pray for the Holy Spirit. That's what we need to pray for. Sometimes we lack faith. Or we are easily discouraged, ready to doubt God, ready to turn away from the church, ready to criticize the church, ready to turn our back from the church. All these, we need the Holy Spirit to help us to get over these hurdles. We have a hard time. We have a hard time with church and we have a hard time with church people. We have a hard time with what sister so said to me about me. Our hard time with what brother so said to about me. Ask for the Holy Spirit. And sister so or brother so can open his mouth or her mouth and it don't affect you. It don't affect you. Ask for the Holy Spirit. It says the Father, it is more. The Father is more willing, much more willing to give us when we ask for it. We are so easily distracted. Sometimes we the Lord don't answer our prayer, and immediately our faith waver, our courage turn, and we start to murmur and feel down and depressed because our prayer is not answered. We have to be persistent in praying. Be persistent in praying. The Lord did God so love the world that he gave his only son. And if all everyone is interested in us, in our salvation, and you and I be here praying for some things, don't you think the Lord is more willing to give those things to us? Don't you think he's more willing to give it to us? than what we, that one we think is far more willing to give to us than we think. John 17, verse 19, And for their sake I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. The principle of Christ's life must be the principle of our lives. And he sanctified himself. We need to sanctify ourselves. So the same devotion, the same self-sacrifice, the same subjection to the claims of the word of God. The mission to the world is to please others and not to please self. Is to glorify God by cooperating with him. Glorify God by cooperating with him in saving souls or winning sinners to his kingdom. Ask blessing from God to communicate to others. The capacity or our capacity for receiving is preserved only by imparting. That is how it goes. So 
if we are not imparting, we don't have anything to take in, we have already full, we have to give and then we'll get more. Give and more will be in. Give and we'll get. In praying, the petition was again and again turned down, but that man was not deterred. Even though he was there asking again and again, and his friend was trying to turn him away. The man was persistent. So our prayer must receive an immediate answer, and we should not cease to pray. If we don't get an immediate answer, we should not cease to pray. Prayer is not to work a change in God. It is to bring us in harmony with God. I'm going to repeat that. Prayer is not to work any change in God. It is to bring us in harmony with God. So when we pray and we make our request and it is not heard, the Lord is sometimes giving us time that we can search our heart and repent. Therefore, sometimes it take, allows trial and test to come for us to see what we need to confess, what we need, what is entering the Holy Spirit from coming through to us. So anytime your prayer is not heard, search your heart and see what is entering it. Certain things happen, I search myself and I see where I go wrong. Because I know if I have something in my heart, say I have some sin in my heart that I'm aware of, I cannot make that connection to God. I cannot approach him as I should. And I know that I'm going to be messed up big time. So what I do, I search my own heart. John 14, 15, and 21. He that hath my commandment, and keep it them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. If he love me, keep my commandment. Many times we say we love Christ, and we are doing the opposite thing. There are conditions to the fulfillment of God's promises. And prayers can never take place of duty. Sometimes we know what to do and we're there praying, praying, praying as if we don't know what to do. And I'm telling you my experience sometimes. I know sometimes I have things to do, certain things I know I have to accomplish. And I pray and a time comes, stop. Now is not the time to pray. Now is the time for action. So prayer cannot take the place of duty. Anyone who brings their petition to God claiming the promise while they do not comply with the, con with the, with the condi condition wherein these prayers should be answered. Insult the Lord name to Jesus. Jesus Christ is like authority. And we do not show that we have faith in Christ or love him and love our neighbors as ourselves. We are insulting God. So we need to clean up, do some house cleaning first before we think about the mansion up there. Your neighbor that is next door, you're the person that you hate so much that you cannot even look in their face. We need to stop that and go to God. Clean up these things first and go, sister, brother, what have I done? We need to pray and to make things right. If I hurt your feeling, I am very sorry. We need to clean up ourselves and to make our lives right. What was the strength of those people who were persecuted in those days? What was the strength of them? Where they got their strength from? The strength was unified, union with God. It was union with Jesus Christ. And it was union with the Holy Spirit. If you love God, you're going to be in union with him. And his little command, you will see as nothing. You will see his command as protection for us. And persecution come upon them and separate those in the past, separate them from their loved one. They were never separated from the love of God. And that's the reason why they were able to go through trials and tribulations. 
because they felt the love of God and they know it and they have experienced it. And so you and I need to have this experience. And if we don't have it, go down on our knees and ask for it. When the truth, when they were put in prison for the truth, say, left behind prison bar, Jesus came and Jesus talked to them. If we can even remember, John and the eyes of Patmos, Jesus spoke, he saw God when he was on Jesus, when he was on the Isle of Patmos there. So the circumstances cannot separate the love of God from people, and it shouldn't separate us from God either. We shouldn't be considering what others have to say. When, when people suffer death, when those suffer death, burning at the stakes and all that, when people suffer death for Christ's sake, you know what, what Jesus says? They can only kill your body. They cannot take your soul. They can only kill your body. They cannot take your soul. Be of good courage, he says. I have overcome this world. So may God help us and bless us that when we go and ask God for the bread of life, we may not only take it for ourselves, we may take it to impart to others. So until then, thank you very much for stopping by in this Bible study. God bless you.